Now, before you begin programming your radio to work with local repeaters, it's a good idea to have a firm understanding of how repeaters work and some of the basic terminology that's used to describe those functions. In this short video, we'll walk through that together. So let's talk a little bit about repeaters and kind of walk through how repeater communication takes place. So you have your transmitting radio, you have your repeater, which is just designated as a antenna here in the middle, and then you have your receive frequency. And the first thing to note is that notice that the repeater have a vertical uh, orientation to their antennas. So when you're talking on your radio, you want to make sure that your antenna is aligned with that repeater's antenna. So all of our antennas here, we notice, are all in alignment. They're all vertically polarized, and that makes a real difference in your communication. So let's say you've got uh, station one is going to transmit. They're going to send their signal up to the repeater. The repeater is going to hear that, and it's going to change the frequency for the output. It's going to do this automatically and instantaneously, and it's going to then send that signal out. And so this is an indirect form of communication. Your radio is not talking directly to that other radio. It's actually talking first up to the repeater station and then that repeater is doing a shift in the frequency and then it's sending it down to the other radios that are all listening to it. So in a sense, this is kind of like working split because you've got those two frequencies on the repeater side where the repeater is listening for one frequency and it's transmitting out on another frequency. So on the transmit side, you usually have some sort of input frequency is what that's referred to. And then you have an output frequency, which is what you're listening to on the repeater. So these are some of the terms that you're likely to see as you start trying to figure out how to build up your code plug. You'll oftentimes also have an offset frequency. And by convention, the offset frequency has always got its focus on the output side, on the receiving side. So you as the operator, if you've got your radio and you're listening to the repeater, you are essentially the center of the world as far as the data is going to be presented. And on the ham side, by convention, if you're talking about a VHF frequency, you generally have plus or minus about 0.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz as the offset frequency. And we'll walk through an example of what that means here in a second. On the UHF side, by convention, it's generally plus or minus five megahertz. So let's walk through a quick example of this. So let's say your repeater's frequency, if you look up in some kind of a table, it says your repeater's frequency is 147.360 megahertz. And, and it also says in there that you've got a positive offset. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that output frequency and you're going to add 0.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz to that output frequency. And so when you add 0.6, to that number, you're going to get an input frequency of 147.960. And that's how that works. And so what happens is your radio is sitting there. It's always listening. It's always in the receive mode. And it's always listening to that output frequency, that 147.360. And it's just sitting there until you press that push to talk button. And then what your radio does is it instantaneously shifts the frequency over to that correct input frequency, and it's going to transmit that frequency up. And that's what the repeater is listening for to then retransmit the on the output side. So let's look at an example from the UHF side. Again, the frequencies that are reported for a repeater are always centered on that receive frequency. So let's say our receive frequency for a repeater is set to 446.740. And in the book that we look up, we find out that this has a negative offset. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 446.740 and we're going to subtract 5 megahertz from that. And that's going to give us a input frequency of 441.740. And this is just a common pairing that you'll find. Is this a requirement? No, it's not a requirement, uh, but this is by convention. So if you see a listing for a repeater and you've got a, a, a frequency listed and you've got a plus or a minus next to it, if it's a VHF frequency, you know you're going to add or subtract 
that 0.6 megahertz. And if it's a UHF frequency, you know you're going to add or subtract that 5 megahertz according to the symbol. Okay, so then what is the tone? Oftentimes this is referred to, this is the CTCSS or the Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. It's really commonly referred to as tone. And essentially what this is, is a sub audible sound that's encoded right on your transmission. And what it's doing is it's, it's actually programmed into the repeater itself. And the repeater thinks of this kind of like a gate. It's not going to allow any signals that are coming into it, even if the correct input frequency is being transmitted to it, it's going to just simply ignore that signal unless that station that sends the input also sends the correct tone. When the repeater hears that correct tone that's underneath, that sub-audible sound, what it will do is it'll just automatically, it'll open up its transmit. You can always hear the repeater if you're tuned into the output frequency if the output is being transmitted if you're not getting into the repeater it may be that you don't have the correct tone set on your radio to be able to transmit in now there's also the concept of an output tone on a repeater and occasionally that's kind of like setting up on your local radio essentially you putting a lock or some kind of a barrier on your radio because you don't want to hear any other transmission on this particular frequency on say on this 446.740 you don't want to hear any other transmission except for that particular repeater that you're listening for now this is oftentimes used if you're in an area where you've got repeaters that have a little bit of an overlap in the signals where they're able to transmit we run into this here in southern california where we'll have some some stations that may be further inland up on higher mountains and some of their frequencies may match the same frequencies that our repeaters are here in southern california but we don't want to necessarily hear those repeaters we want to hear the local one what you have to do is you have to make sure that the your radio is programmed to the correct repeater tone and then if the repeater sends out that tone then it will open up the receive on your radio so that you're able to hear that transmission it essentially uh, excludes the other transmissions now if you are having issues one thing that you can always do is you can take that output tone and you can just turn it off and then you'll hear everything coming out of the repeater so it's a great little trick to check what's going on you can also try a lot of times to just listen on the input frequencies because sometimes you'll have uh you'll have a new ham who has not set up their radio correctly for the correct offset so they're not hitting the repeater and so if you just listen on the input frequency without a tone sometimes you can hear them and you can talk simplex to them direct without any tones and let them know hey you're just you're not making it into the repeater hey thanks for learning with us if you found this information helpful be sure to like the video and leave us a comment we'd love to hear from you if you haven't already subscribe to wave talkers and be sure to ring the bell so you know whenever we publish new content if you'd like to learn more check out wavetalkers.com or watch this next video